Hello there everyone, I am Pino here, and today I am going to be doing a Kerbal Space Program tutorial. Uh, I did a few basic tutorials a long time ago, but the game has gotten a lot of updates since then. Uh, 1.0 just came out, and so I figured it's time for me to update my tutorial. Uh, so this is the new and improved tutorial series, and uh, it's going to be a little more... Uh, going to cover a little more, I should say, than the last series, which was only three episodes of just the basics. But uh, we're going to start assuming that you have just bought Kerbal Space Program and you don't know really what you're doing. So if that is you, then uh, this is the video for you. If it's not, uh, maybe you can still learn something. I don't know. So the first thing you do when building a ship is you select a command pod or a cockpit or a satellite probe. Uh, something to be the basis of your ship. So, I've just selected a command pod. If we wanted to build a satellite, we would select one of these. Um, so, that is that. And the next thing uh, you need to do, basically, if you're building just a basic rocket, let's say, to just get up into orbit. That's going to be our goal for this episode. Uh, what you're going to want to do is give it some way to control itself. So we're going to add a... Uh, advanced inline stabilizer here. Basically it just allows you to control your craft uh, better. So that's a good thing to add. Then uh, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to decide how much of your craft are you going to want returning to Kerbin. If you want to just get up into space and into orbit you don't need parachutes, you don't need anything, uh, nothing. You can just stay up there forever. But if you want to come back, which I'm assuming you do, you're going to want to put parachutes on your craft. So I like to, if we're using this basic cockpit, put this MK-16 parachute uh, on top. That's just convenient. And then these side-mounted parachutes um, here, those are drogue chutes. We want these chutes, the blue little lines here, the radial mount parachutes. And you're going to go, and I like to hit C. What hitting C does is it does angle snap. So you see here how like you can kind of put it at whatever angle. If you put C... If you press C, it'll snap to like certain corners that make more sense. And I like to leave that on. So that is C that changes that down here. Then X changes your symmetry. So we want angle snap on, and we want times 2 symmetry. And we're just going to put these parachutes on opposite sides there. The other thing to make sure that's important is you know uh, as you add parts, they're going to add to the staging of your rocket, which is displayed over here. So both of these parachutes are in the same stage, which means when I hit spacebar for that stage, they will both fire at the same time, which is good. That's what you want out of your parachutes. So, uh, that is good. And what we can do now is uh, we could add some scientific experiments to your rocket if you want, if you were doing a career mode or a science mode. So we'll add that just to uh, show it, even though this is sandbox mode for me and uh, we don't really need to, but we're going to do it anyway. So, uh, then, let's go to, is it under structural or aerodynamics? Here, it's under aerodynamics. What we're going to want to put on to our craft is the appropriately sized heat shield. So, that just happens to be this one. Now, this heat shield is used to re-enter the atmosphere. When you come screaming back down through the atmosphere, your craft is going to heat up, a lot. You need to have this heat shield on the bottom of whatever you want to be returning to the atmosphere. Um, so for that, we are just going to place it here, which means this is the portion of our craft I am expecting to return to the atmosphere. After you have that established, um, we can probably make sure uh, we have a few more parachutes actually, just because uh, if you can afford it, you always want to be safe. So, let's put a couple more parachutes here, and you could do it times four if you wanted. I'm going to just stick with times two. So we'll put a few more here. Now, the thing you want to do is you want to kind of have your parachutes... Oops, I only did times one. My bad. Okay. You kind of want to have your parachutes more towards the top of your craft that is going to be returning because if they're all spread out through the bottom then it's going to pull your craft up and you're going to land on your side whereas this way we will ideally land uh, plonk down with our heat shield down first so 
Um, we will also rename our craft. Sample rocket. There we go. Okay, so this is the basic portion of our rocket that's going to be returning. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go to structural and add something called a decoupler. A decoupler is what separates sections of your rocket. So you see it adds to the staging down here, so the decoupler will fire on a different stage than the parachutes, which is good. Um, we could put them on the same stage, uh, because as soon as we decouple this, we're just going to be powerless. We can't move. We don't have fuel on this. So we are going to probably uh, be entering the atmosphere anyway by the time we decouple this. So you could move this up one stage by clicking and dragging, or you could add a stage and put it back down. Um, either way, it is uh, completely your call. So, now that we've got our decoupler, we can add the actual propulsion system for our rocket. And, I mean, if you're in sandbox mode, uh, you can use a lot of different stuff. If you're in career mode, you may have to unlock this stuff. But um, you can use this big fuel tank. You can use a bunch of these smaller fuel tanks if you need to. Um, I don't need to, though, so I'm just going to use the big one. Uh, because why not? So, what you can do is, uh, I like to have a, let's see, where is it? Yes, the swivel, LT45 swivel engine. And the reason you want this engine is because it has something called thrust vectoring, which basically, uh, it is just a system that allows you to steer and turn. Uh, whereas the Reliant engine does not have thrust vectoring. It's got a bit more power, but you're going to have less, uh, easy control of your craft, so I would recommend for beginners uh, and basic rockets going with the swivel engine unless you have a reason to do otherwise. Uh, and that's assuming you're choosing between these two. You could also go with the terrier engine, uh, which is smaller, and when you're up out in space, that's a good thing, but uh, we don't really need it. Okay, so we've got this basic rocket. This is a very basic rocket. And now, uh, what we're going to do is explain, basically, how we're going to get this up into space. So, what we want to add now is something called a radial decoupler. Now, we're going to add four of them by hitting X twice, so that you have one on each side of your rocket there. And to that, we are going to attach, under engines, a solid fuel booster. Now these solid fuel boosters, basically what they are, is they are boosters that will fire right away when you launch your craft, and uh, they will carry you up, pretty much. So what we're going to do is we're going to burn through the solid fuel boosters down in the lowest, thickest part of the atmosphere, and hope that by the time they run out uh, and we decouple them, we will fire up our engine, we'll be through the thickest part of the atmosphere, and it'll be a lot more fuel efficient and easy for us to get up into space uh, with this rocket then, rather than just burning the more uh, expensive and heavier liquid fuel from the beginning. So hopefully that makes sense. Basically you want to use solid fuel to fire off the launch pad and then use liquid fuel uh, once you're up through the thickest part of the atmosphere. Okay, so that is basic rocket building, basic rocket flight, now, if you have struts unlocked, you always want to add a few struts, assuming you can afford to. And the thing about it is, basically, if it doesn't move and it should, you add boosters. If it moves and it shouldn't, you add struts. So if we didn't add any struts, these would probably be moving around a bit and a bit unstable, and we don't want that. So since we have sandbox mode and unlimited money, we can just throw a bunch of struts on there, uh, wherever it seems like it would make sense. And basically, you just kind of feel that out as you get better. But um, you want to connect your solid fuel boosters at the top and bottom, probably, to hold them, make sure they're burning in the same direction and not shaking or wobbling at all. And then you want to connect your inner uh, section of your rocket to the outer section. And that is basically the basics of struts. Okay, so there is our sample rocket. And the last thing we can add, also under structure here, is a launch stability enhancer. And what this does is uh, basically it holds your craft on the launch pad so that it's not just sitting on the ground. Now, 
you want to make sure your launch stability enhancer is in the same stage as your first set of boosters. So we'll move our solid fuel boosters down here to fire when these let go. So these will release, the boosters will fire at the same time, and then uh, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to move this rocket down to fire when these decouple. So when these solid fuel boosters uh, get out of fuel and launch off, we will fire our middle engine right away. So that is that. Um, the other thing you can do is look at your crew. We have Jebediah. Couldn't ask for anyone better. So let's get ready to launch. Okay, here we go. And we are ready to fire this basic rocket. And so you see we will throttle up using shift. Control is to throttle down. If you hit T, you turn off and on SAS. SAS is what you use to control your craft, so you want that to be on, because that will keep you pointing in the same direction. So, basically, uh, we throttle up. The other thing you can do is hit M to go to map mode, and if you click down here, you'll get your nav ball and stuff in map mode. You can click up here and see your resources, your fuel, your electric charge, all of that good stuff. So, hit M to return from map mode, and then we will get ready to launch our craft in three, two, one. All right, so there the solid fuel boosters have fired and we are screaming up through the thickest part of the atmosphere, which you can see here. This lightest blue is the thickest part of the atmosphere. Slightly darker blue is uh, the middle part. And then the light or the darkest grayest blue here is less atmosphere. So we want to be screaming up through the top of this. And as we do, we're going to want to do something called a gravity turn. But we don't want to worry about that until we fire off the solid fuel boosters. So we just did that. And now what we want to do is we want to start turning towards, in the bottom nav ball, there's a 90 degree mark here. Uh, it's over on this side. You want to make sure you're not going towards 270. you got to be going towards 90. Now, as you're in the thicker parts of the atmosphere, you got to go slow. You see that green circle? You basically don't want your little nav ball to leave the green circle uh, while you're in the thickest part of the atmosphere, because if you do, then uh, you're likely to spin out. Once you get out into the thinner parts of the atmosphere, you can pretty much turn over onto the angle you want. So if we are burning for orbit here, we see here is our apoapsis, here's our flight path, and we are going well out into space. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn and burn directly sideways now and just extend out our path here and actually you know what are we gonna go into orbit I don't know if we quite have enough fuel I could have maybe used one more fuel tank on here or just a more efficient burn either way but we are going to get up out into space and then I will show you um, how to re-enter the atmosphere with this craft and have it not blow up and die horribly. So, we can burn up to our apoapsis here, and we could see if we have enough fuel to get into orbit. If you're up at your apoapsis and you burn prograde, you're going to extend your orbit and swing it out, and we'll explain uh, how to orbit and more things like that in more detail in future videos. So, this is just basically a rocket that will get you up into space and uh, a basic understanding of how to build rockets and stuff like that. So, now that we have run out of fuel, what we can do is we can hit the next stage, which will decouple this section, and there it goes. So here is the part of the craft that's going to return to Kerbin. We can observe the science bay if you want, even though we don't need it. We're in, uh, we are in sandbox mode. You can do EVAs with your Kerbals while you're out here. Hit spacebar to let go. R to activate your jetpack, W, A, S, and D, move you around, shift goes up, control goes down, and that is basically how you EVA. Um, it takes just a bit of practice, but you see here you have a certain amount of EVA propellant, and when you run out of that, uh, you best be back in your ship or you're in trouble. So, that is the basics of EVA, and it's really not that difficult. So hit F to grab, B to board. We could have done an EVA report um, by clicking on him, but we didn't need it. So, now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to turn 
um, and face retrograde so that our heat shield is leading in front of us. That is going to be important because we want the heat shield to enter the atmosphere first and obviously take the brunt of the heat. So, let's warp down now until we reach the atmosphere, which begins at 70,000 meters. There we go. So we are now in the atmosphere, and we are about to come down into this ocean. So, what we're going to want to do is also make sure we've got our parachutes activated. So we've hit that now, we've hit spacebar, and the parachutes have turned blue over in this little side here thing. That means that they are going to deploy as soon as the atmosphere is thick enough. So if you hit space, your parachutes don't deploy. Don't worry if they're blue, that means they will as soon as they are able. So, as you're coming down in the atmosphere, the thing is you're coming down at an angle. So you have to do a little bit of work to make sure you continue to point yourself retrograde so that your heat shield is absorbing, uh, absorbing all of the heat which you can see there is a lot of as we come screaming down through the thick part of the atmosphere and burn a bit. But once it gets thick enough, our parachutes deploy, and they slow us down tremendously, and Jebediah is a very happy Kerbal. So, now we can only warp four times speed down in the atmosphere, so I'm not going to make you watch all of this, but basically now what happens is we slowly, slowly drift down into the ocean, and we plop down to safety. So that is that. That is the basics of building a rocket and uh, flying it, upgraded for 1.0s, aerodynamics, and stuff like that. The thing is, if you have problems and you're playing this directly after 1.0 was released, I heard on Reddit, I don't know much of the details, but I heard there was some problems with an update to the aerodynamics that they made, and they are working on fixing it. So if you bought the game, right after 1.0 and you were having a ton of trouble with your craft blowing up and things like that, there's a chance that it may have been due to a bit of a faulty system uh, that they had in place that will be fixed soon, so don't fret. Um, basically, if you do this, uh, this should work, this should get you the hang of it, and uh, once you know the basics and you can pull this sort of stuff off, you should be able to work your way up to the more advanced stuff like that. But uh, I will be covering a bit more stuff in future tutorials, so make sure to subscribe and all of that stuff. If you want to see something specific in a tutorial, um, let me know down in the comments, and if I am qualified to give advice on that topic, I will try to make it into a tutorial. So, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.